I want to give my bit on Android fragmentation. Especially now, this whole big hullabaloo over Honeycomb and is it really going to be locked down? Is Google going to revert to having control? And see, they're going to be just like Apple. Listen, that usually comes from the side and an analysis of bloggers that will refute those that are on the Android side of saying, see, you're too controlling this and that. And, of course, each each one reverting to arguments of trying to say, well, this is the, the pot calling the kettle black. In this instance, you see, you see. But I think what a lot of is missing here is is the, this fragmentation and they're saying Google's admitting to by trying to exert some control which I don't entirely agree with that this is because of fragmentation fragmentation being that there's so many versions of Android that for developers it's a nightmare to program for and so now all these programmers are up in arms because what are they going to do? They can't get their apps to as many phones and yada, 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 yada. The truth of it is, is that I know a, a, quite a few Android developers. And programming for any one Android version is really not as much of an issue as some of these polls are suggesting. And I'd really like to dig into some of the polls and some of the demographics and the types of developers that they were talking to. Because there are, for instance, iOS is filled with, as, as well as Android, it's not just single-handedly, but you'd be hard-pressed not to find advertisements for develop for iOS and not know any code, and have all these kinds of wrappers and things just for allowing just any guy on the street to build an application. And of course, that's going to have a, a certain template that it needs to follow by, and so it's easier for that company to definitely market to a one standard type platform because it's an easy and quick buck. It's totally turnkey. However, the idea of Android, while there is versions out there, you have, if any one of you are Android developers, you have all the SDK plugins and your selections and recommendations for wrappers and things like that. It's, uh, like I said, I, I really disagree with the poll and, and trying to emphasize that, well, fragmentation is a problem. In reality, what is it? Eclair and Froyo are the two largest. So really, the f if there is going to be the software, software fragmentation, it's between 2.1 and 2.2. Now, Android in itself inherits, if you want to call it, fragmentation and having different versions, because that's the whole idea. All right. Let's say versus iOS, which has a primary set phone that Bam! It's set for it, and it works great for it. It's a, it's what many uh, Apple supporters and even my own self have used before in saying, well, it's got a great merriment of, of software and hardware. But sometimes it's not always the best to have. All right, there, you can't put iOS on, let's say, a a a handset that is only concerned with, say, doing navigation and doesn't want to really support anything else, or a handset that take the Kyocera Echo, which has two of these, these, these screens that put together that requires a special SDK. There are tons of, I won't say tons, but there are quite a few phones out there that choose to run Android because of the way it's licensed out, because of the openness behind it that allows carriers to actually get to some very unique phones, like these boutique phones and things like that, that would inherently have a different version for themselves. Of course, it's up to the vendor that sells it to, to market its SDK and get out to Android developers and say, hey, you know what, we think our phone is pretty special because we have two screens, or heck, our navigation system is the best on this, or our gaming platform is the best on this because we have these unique controls and, and so on and so forth. That's not going to happen on iOS, but it does happen on Android, and thus that is a good thing. Now. Everything can't be viewed of, well, I'm a developer and, and my idea is to get out to the mass market and, and as, as many platforms as possible. That is true, but not every, it's an inherent flaw to assume that every developer thinks that. Because you, you have to think of logistics and support and all kinds of things that, when you tackle that and wanting to be on every mobile platform. Okay, if, if you have a gigantic 
or a somewhat sufficient staff to be able to worry about your different versions that are on, say, WebOS, Android, iOS, or going to be on RIMS, QNX, what have you, there are logistical concerns. So I, I flat out reject this developers wanting to be on just everything just for the sake of being like reaching the mass market because the truth of it is is I I know quite a few developers in my circles and you could and it's the same on Android and on iOS the larger really these markets these app markets are the exposure to get your application out there is not as great as Apple or Android would probably want you to have there you're you're going up against big also big players that do have uh, name recognition and they have pre-release softwares and things like that which is normal there's nothing nothing wrong with that but the point again being that oh the, the I, I must achieve this maximum reach for my application when let's say that I do want to build a, an application that could thrive within say a hospital using that a, a dual screen or build a game for that specific phone that has these unique controllers that some of the people will just say I can't have that on a phone but it's gonna market well and, and, and make a lot of money for me perhaps I charge nineteen dollars for that game because and it's able to use it and it, it gets quite popular there's there's all kinds of examples just be, beyond that which may have not been the best examples of why developers aren't always going to seek this bottom argument that I find mostly coming from Apple bloggers that this this ultimate maximum reach and therefore fragmentation becomes a problem and then developers are just not going to do it. Well, based on upon, upon things I see, there are a tremendous amount of interest in Android. And of course, the more vendors come up with building their own unique phones, they're going to employ Android and use its openness to say, hey, and then here's our SDK on top of it. So now let's come to terms with saying what what this honeycomb deal is the way I view Android's past is that Android is this very fast running person and they're dropping all these breadcrumbs behind them and not really looking back and they're just hauling butt just running 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 and all the carriers and uh, smartphone vendors or semi smartphone vendors pick up these breadcrumbs and go oh I, I like this I like this I like this and, and went through a tremendous amount of Android flavors rather rapidly. And it was really a rush to try to get feature sets and, and go, oh, well, we need to, we need to, we, we, this manufacturer's talking about this, okay, drop another breadcrumb and that, maybe that vendor picks it up. And it did create a, a very rapid succession of versions. But again, today we're really at 2.1 and 2.2. But there was something in between all that where you had the, the what was it, the Nexus 1, which was Android's attempt at making their own handset and saying, these are the type of things that we would like to see. As, 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 as a standard. So they're doing that with Honeycomb, which really many will argue that is not fully baked underneath. And so Android really wants to fully cook it rather than being this sprinter that's dropping breadcrumbs now wants to keep at a pace with the vendors and say, okay, let's, yes, let's get more on the same page. That doesn't mean it's closed or putting the bars up. Right now, just like with any other company, of course there's going to be preferential treatment with vendors they want to try to give early release to. It doesn't mean that it's closed. Preferential treatment is not, you just have early access to something. It will eventually come uh, to, to the vendors when, they, when it's, I guess, deemed fi fully cooked and released for the masses. And then it will just be just as open for any other vendor that wants to have access. So, I think this is... Google's way of instead of doing like the Nexus One, working closer hand in hand with vendors and manufacturers and carriers to kind of get that that a standard that they would like. But don't assume that this is going to be this absolute uniform standard when it comes to very unique phones that still employ Android and their SDKs to run on those phones or just. Handsets that just don't have all the, f or are capable of all the full features that perhaps future versions of Android will su will support. And all that will happen is that the types of wrappers that Android programmers put in are, are just simply, you don't either, you don't, you, you, you handle in that this app is not supported, 
for this type of phone, as in I give you an example like the Web OS market, you have uh, 1.45 and then you have 2.1. My 1.45, when I hit the market, cannot see 2.1 type applications. So you can you can handle it there, or say the application can run in some sort of part of it can run, but other features that it expects to be there, well, fine. As it's developed and compiled, then those only certain only certain parts have execution access and so on and so forth. It I I I just find it. Uh, a, f a feeble argument to keep harping on this on this Android fragmentation, especially when coming from the Apple camp. And there's so many other very nice pros about iOS over Android, and then there's of course going to be pros for Android over iOS. And but I just don't think the the, the this fragmentation argument is, is one that should be as uh, touted as is within the blocks. Thanks for watching.